I'm sorry, are you her lawyer? No. She is under my protection. So you her boyfriend? No, I'm her protector. I thought I was pretty clear on that point. We're going to go talk to her, and we don't even know if you're the one that hit her. If we have to take her somewhere, we will. Puts a hand on you in a way that's almost fatherly. And I hope you're not the guy who's beating up girls. We don't put up with that in this city. Put my hand on Bug's shoulder. Of course, officer, we'll stay in here. We'll stay here. The cops could be doing their due diligence. However, my... And honestly, I am the prime suspect. I would suspect the fuck out of me, too. I got no problems with it. But that being said, the cops here have been racist motherfuckers. She is not a white girl. I have very mixed feelings about letting them take care of this case. So once they're out of sight, I will, because you're still, like, holding me back. Right, Red? Yeah, yeah I mean, I'm not... You're holding me back spiritually. You're right. not like nelson me. Yeah. You are basically putting your hand on my shoulder saying, this is a bad idea. Don't pick a fight with the cops. Right. I will say, we can't let the cops take her. <clears throat> you guys um, have a lot of superpowers between uh, between you. Do you listen to the conversation somehow? Oh, yeah. I will. I switch over to my, my super hearing. I'll try to intercede with a uh, hand of my card. I'm Sling Connor from Rainbow's End. This is a woman that I was checking up on. Perhaps. Are you also a superhero? She's a girl that I'm checking up on. Is she a resident I, of your shelter? She's looking to be. I was coming over to interview her when I found out when I found her with a broken jaw. And I hand him the license plate. This is the license plate of like a pimp mobile pulling away. The guys look at the license plate. They're looking back and forth at each other and say, we won't be needing here tonight. Thank you. Hey, hey, Bug. What'd they say? They say we won't be needing you here tonight. Thank you. Mm. Hey, hey, Bug. You can go. Is yeah. that another superhero? Is she a superhero also? I don't know. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I thought you knew her. She Is knows it? me, but I'm vaguely famous. I get punched in the face on TV a lot. <laughs> okay. I run a woman's shelter over at Moscow West. Huh. So, yes, she's a superhero. Oh, good. Nice, nice. Whether she has powers or not, definitely is. Why would you say that? Because you're running a woman shelter. Oh, okay. You mean that in a friendly, jovial... No, in a literally you're saving lives. Okay. okay All I okay, do okay, is okay. punch people and get punched. I mean, any idiot can do that. Okay. Oh, I'm hey, just, we're I'm trading. just an amateur social worker. Hey, guys, if we're trading cards, by the way, here, I pull out Winston's card. Oh, yeah, that's the guy we need to go punch. I'll hand that to Bug. And I'll hand Bug his phone back. Yeah, social security card. And... <laughs> Since um, I've had the time with Bug's phone, I put one of my uh, little chip trackers in his phone and don't tell him and hand it back. The cops have a, a conversation with her briefly. She can't speak, so that she, you can hear that she's writing. Does not want to talk to these two cops. There's no question. So you can't hear her responses. You can only hear what the two cops are saying to her. You know, what's wrong with her? And the doctor talks about it. Someone just really beat this girl. You know what I mean? They're not taking her anywhere. Okay. <laughs> this is like going to unspool minute by minute, right? Um, so they have the conversation with her, and the doctor talks about that she just got the crap kicked out of her. And um, he doesn't know if she's been sexually assaulted or just has a vigorous sex life. But and the doc says, look, there's only so many answers. This girl's been raped and probably more than once. Bug, what were you doing there? Did you hurt her? Are you responsible for this? No. Hold up my talk to me right now kind of thing. Because I do look like I'm concentrating. <laughs> um, I can second that. I uh, can put it in a good word. I don't think he would do that. The Red Runner. Yeah, that's me. Yep. Why weren't you there earlier? Aren't you really fast? You know how it is. Uh, Domino's is having a special right now, so I was kind of busy. But yeah, no, I, I don't know. I was doing other stuff. Who's this Winston guy? I have no idea. Two cops are talking, and she writes something down and says, like, come on, we'll take you, we'll take you back to uh, the Capitol Point. And she starts to trying to scream with her jaw partially wired shut. Look, that's the law, and there's not much we could do about it. And through the wall, you start to hear a girl with a partially wired jaw shut, screaming, and you're starting to hear thrashing. I actually look at Rosa and, and Red and go, we're up. And then I will walk towards the door. Push. 
I'm not slamming open this. This is my, my usual. I am not forceful. I am inevitable. Like a glacier. Pop the door open and you hear this splintering wood and all of this. And the two cops who look like, you know, they're official and they're taking notes and all of that. And this one of them has restrained the girl who's just tried to get up and get away from them. He's holding her hand. And she is so obviously massively distressed besides that i mean her face is partially bandaged because the doctors did take care of her her jaw is currently wired shut she is apoplectic the doctor is here right the doctor is stood back for, away from the two cops i will look at the doctor and say it was my understanding she was not well enough to leave the other cop turns around and he says listen 8-bit this is none of your business it was my understanding she was not well enough to leave he puts his hand on his gun and says, look, there's ways we can do this. This is absolutely legal. She's a, she's a citizen of another nation and we're taking her home. Look, I, I can't, yes, she's not, but I can't. Look, if they're gonna take her, I can't stop them. I step up. You can start shooting in a hospital. Which do you want it to be? And the, the two cops, one look at each other and one says, oh man. That was the guy on the monster truck that came through the wall. He's like, what? The guy on the monster truck that came right through the wall. You saw the footage. And he's like, the guy that was here with the missile? He's like, yeah, that guy. Yeah, that guy. The cop with his hands free pulls out his phone and says, look, I'm calling the FBE. You call whoever you want to, but that girl goes not one step towards any direction she doesn't want to go. Are we clear? You know you're interfering with the police matter. I have lost a great deal of respect for your organization when they were helping the Nazis. So you'll have to excuse me if you're flinging your big ass governmental dick all over this place means nothing to me. When your organization cleans itself fucking up, we can talk. Until then, we need a supervisor. You can stay right here. She lies back in her bed and the doctor checks on her for the damage you've already made worse. The cops back up a step. He lets the girl go and she's not doing well. She's both injured and utterly frantic. And the doctor comes over. You could just see she doesn't want any men near her. I motion to Rosa. Can you check on her, please? Certainly, I'll step forward and start yep. doing whatever protocol they have for dealing with traumatized women. Influence an aura or what? Influence six, aura five. You will need to roll an 11. Nine, 10, 11. 11, exactly. 12, so, actually I got a 12, a nine oh, and a three is 12. The fact that you're not a man was obviously the big visible difference and you move in slowly and come in from down low and all of that. She eventually calms down, but you have to get the cops to leave the room. I will ask them nicely to leave. I'm not about violence. I'm just really good at it. All you men gotta get out of this room. And the doctor's like, well, what about me? Well, you can verify that I'm making a logical medical decision at this point that she's been traumatized by men and she's going to need to calm down and she's only gonna trust a woman at this point. She's right, she's right. And the cops aren't happy, but they'll leave the room, which leaves you guys very uncomfortably in the waiting room with two cops that you just upstaged. No, I'm, I'm not uncomfortable. Jeez, have you just <laughs> met me? So... <laughs> You guys like, you guys actually like donuts or is that just a stereotype? <laughs> One says to the other, who's the kid? Oh, that's Red Rocket, he's new. Cool. See him in the posters downtown, he took the media job. I just want to clarify, it's Red Runner, but yeah. Right, sorry, Red Rider. Well, I mean, I was gonna offer donuts, but you know. <laughs> when a supervisor shows up, he comes in and he looks at what's going on, and there's like three, four, five guys outside, but this one guy comes forward. 13, so not bad. So, yeah, you do spot that amongst, other, not the car the guys the cops just came in in, but right across the way is a car with the same logo as the limousine. Another red and brown nice car with the same logo that you've seen before has parked across the street. What exactly is the problem here? A young lady is requiring medical care, and we're just waiting for her to receive it. Look, she's in a chuck. All right. And your name, sir? Bug. Your name is Bug? Yes. Well, Bug, this is a matter of, of course, we want this lady to receive the medical care that she needs. And if she's in with the doctor, that's great. I will step up. 
apparently then you need to discuss this with your officers as they were pulling her out of her bed against her doctor's orders. So apparently there is some level of disconnect between she needs medical care and we need to fucking deport her. So she's not being deported. The nation she's a member of, she's a Native American, is about 20 miles south of here. They weren't deporting her, they were taking her home. Despite the fact she requires medical care, so... Well, let the doctor finish, that's okay. These no, doctors... apparently it wasn't a few minutes ago! He stands back about three feet. Look, we don't want this to escalate any more than it already has. I will step back, because, you know, if he if he's willing to, to... I'm willing to step back. I'm more angry that I step back. Cops pantomiming at him, and he's like, what? What? And he says, that bug, the bug bug. What? They're worried that I'll kill you. I'm not going to, mind you, but... He might. I will not, Red! Stop that! Wait, you're the, um... You're FPE, aren't you? Aren't you, um, Red Roses? Close enough. Aren't you Raw Rider? <laughs> <laughs> is this an FBE matter? Or is the government involved? Uh, no. I believe they were called, but... I mean, not yet. They're not here yet. Are you planning on, like, questioning this girl or something? Or, es or at least escorting her back? Because I think that you got something between your legs that she might not uh, take too kindly to. Same thing with the rest of us in this room. He looks down at his sidearm and he says, No, I keep it all the way over on the left. Well, then, good for you. Look, gentlemen, lady, you understand that this is the law, is that this is a woman who was attacked on reservation lands. She left the reservation. We just want to take her back. We're law enforcement because the crime was committed in another nation. So what a part of taking her to another nation doesn't sound like deportation to you. I'm just curious. We're taking her 20 miles. It's not like we're putting on her plane back to Mexico. The crime was committed in another country. Don't you want it investigated? I want her to receive the medical care that your officers were trying to drag her away from. Sure. We'll let, absolutely. We'll let the doctor finish, but then she has to go. Hey, Bug, if it's any uh, reassurance for you, I can monitor the escort when they bring her back. I don't think she's going to go outside of knocking her unconscious and dragging her, it's gonna happen. And I'm not gonna let them hurt her. So I go to jail tonight. You're in the exam room talking to this woman who is, we still haven't learned her name. She cannot speak, although she makes some grunty noises. She is obviously Native American, pretty, right? But it looks like a high school girl and calmer, but still not in a good way. What do you do? Get a uh, paper and pencil. Tell her, um, I run Rainbow's End Women's Shelter. Can you tell me what happened? I'm here to help. Well, she scrawls out quickly. Are you with the bug? Yes. I had a dream of him that I needed to see him immediately. The old woman with no face? Question? Yes, yes. She sent me to the bug. Why do you think he can help? What's going? What do you need help from? I'm getting convincing. I'm, uh, I got rolled an 11. Okay. And they're what, six and seven? Uh, six and five. She looks at you and she's got, you know, big tears in her eyes. And this is someone who is just like run to the end of a road and like there's nothing nowhere else for her to go. I'm a prisoner there. We all are. Who's keeping you prisoner? Woman without the face? No. The casino. Casino. Who runs the casino? At this point, the FBEE guys come in, and there's a new guy that's come in from Washington. He's out front, and he walks and he recognizes Bug and Red immediately. Oh, that's the illegal vigilante Bug. Red Runner, are you in the middle of apprehending this vigilante? Yeah, and I just grab Bug on the arm. I got him right here. This is not the image we need of enhanced entities in our city. We don't want to be interfering in Indian matters, and we don't want fights with the police. We also don't want police dragging injured women out of their uh, hospital beds. I don't see anybody dragging anybody. You are an inch from having a bench warrant issued for you from the events of last month. If you're seen in the company of that crazy woman that throws trucks, I'm going to have a warrant issued for your arrest. I think you should just back off of this and let the police handle their job. In walks Winston. The police obviously know him. And he looks at Bug and does this, hiya. <laughs> cool as December, and he says, from what I understand, you have a citizen of my nation that I need to take back home. Yeah, yeah, she's an Inichuk. You can give her a ride home. You're all now all essentially in the same room. And there's a lot of people and things are suddenly very tense. 
She sees Winston and she just about crawls through the wall to try and get away from him. This guy's a pimp. You need to be arresting this guy for prostitution. Winston says, you must be mistaking me for somebody else. Is it because I'm a gentleman of color? Technically, it's procurement, not prostitution. Just Man is obviously does not look Indian anyway. I'm a member of the Inichuk Nation, and I am a member of the, uh, the casino board, and I just want to take this lady home, just like the law says. This guy's a street hustler. He's picking up his merchandise. He may be, but the law's on his side. She's not going to go. The police want her to go. They're going to have to physically drag her out. Did any of you stop this? Well, it's causing her so much distress that I can't imagine. I'm going to pull, I want to pull Bug off to the side. All right, listen, you are vigilante, right? So you don't act according to the law. So what if we let this guy take her and then who's to say he doesn't run into the great vigilante Bug? on the way to where they're going. Because of the amount of stress it's causing her. I don't fight crimes to punch people in, in the face. Winston can go live a happy life wherever he wants, commit whatever crimes he wants, as long as he doesn't hurt people. And right now they're actively hurting that woman. And I can't let that happen. Winston did just beat Bug at a fight and he did bushwhack him though. Yeah, I got plans for that. Not great plans, because they, the way my powers work, I, I gotta give to take, kind of. You don't necessarily have to beat him. But no. if we just... I'm gonna have to kidnap the girl. That's what this comes to. Where do you want her to be at? You can't get involved, you're the good one. Never said I was gonna get involved. Where do you want her to be at? If we take her to my place, they, it becomes even more complicated. Oh, I know where to take her. So how do you guys deal with the moment, the confrontation moment? The police are going to take her. Bugs indicating that he's going to kidnap her, and I'm not concerned about that because I got tracker on his phone that I put gave back. So I'm pretty comfortable if that he, if he wings out with her that I'm going to be able to follow. Are you going to take her through the wall? Are you going to fight with Winton? How are you planning on kidnapping her? There's a lot of logistics to this. The cops what? are going to take her. Do you stand in the way? Where do you want her to be at? Look, we'll sort that out. The cops grab her, and even though she's pretty wildly thrashing, they put her in cuffs, and they're taking her away. I will walk near, but not in the way. But once they get inside, I go all dragonfly, swoop in, and just steal her away. Roll me two dice. Without my power, I'm still no one you want to fuck with. But I only rolled a five. So I'm hoping the fact that they're human will, you know. And the guy manages to pull her down. Give me an initiative. I got a 28. 28 beats so uh, Winston. I got a 25. 20. Winston's obviously going to draw some variety of a weapon. The police are going for their guns. I'm if going to use my martial arts to disarm him. I just flipped the screen up with Winston there. That's his gun. Going to do the hoot drive. Bend his arm back. Okay. Drop it. Kick it across the floor. So you're trying to disarm him or you're trying to hurt him? I'll go for hurt. Go for breaking his wrist. Trying to break his wrist. Whew. You do indeed break his wrist. Ha! <laughs> Can't shoot straight now, motherfucker. With his other arm, he draws a Chris knife that he had up under his jacket. And this guy is, even with his right arm broken, he's drawn with his left hand. And he's coming around with a technique you've seen before. This guy is absolutely studied. He's a classically trained knife fighter and tries to basically take you from sternum to crotch. Dexterity of five. He rolled terrible. You managed to get out of, you managed to step back. But this man knows how to use a knife. Wow. Ah, that's not good. Uh, Parker? I don't have my uh, shit on. I, so you said the cops are also drawing weapons? They are. Drawing the firearms? Uh, yeah, I'd like to try to disarm them. Which is nine. I got a 19. You easily managed to disarm both cops. You get these Glock 19s. Nice guns. Can I do like the... I just want to unload them. I'm just going to unload them. You could disassemble them and clean them. Yeah, I, yeah. I'll break them down if I need to. And then drop the pieces on the ground. Kind of scatter them. Yeah, let's not have any of that right now. I have my same intent. I am flying away with the girl. So you grab her and shoot straight up. So there's lots of screaming and things going on. And the um, FBE guy is like, I'm going to put a warrant out on you. You're going down, bug. The cops are looking around for the guns and they're kind of confused. And the supervisor's like, hold on. We don't want any more shootings. No shootings. You know what happens when there's shootings. 
Winston just looks at you with his arm kind of up like this and smiles. And he says, I'm going to remember you. You better. Puts the knife back up under his coat and gets in his car. And he says, oh, rest assured. Bug, you're flying off with... Metal's going to be so mad, but I'm taking her to Metal's place. <laughs> I was wondering if Metal's loft was going to come up. Okay. No, of course it is. This girl needs some place where it doesn't, isn't directly associated with me, which yep. is safe, secured, has a system, and I can get into. Now, if Metal did not give me codes, I will, as delicately as I can, break in. You would need to be able to fly to get up to Metal's balcony. Right, Which that's where I'm going. She doesn't lock the door because there's only like six people in the city that can get through. And her partner is one of them. Right. <laughs> so I will go in, I'll open the door. I'm like, I tr I'm trying to talk calmly. Yep. And I'm like, I'm leaving you here. Please stay here. There's food in the refrigerator. There's cable TV. Just stay here. I just couldn't let them take you back. She reaches out and she grabs, she's looking for something and she, you know, kind of desperately and can't find anything. Eventually brings up one of Metal's computers and starts typing on the screen. You're the heroes, right? You're the heroes? We're trying to be. She told me that you could save us. She told me you could save us all. I just couldn't let them take you, so I've made everything more complicated, but I just couldn't let them take you. It's a laptop, I'm hoping. They're around. I mean, they're... I will pick up a laptop and then head towards the balcony. And as I, I go, she doesn't like me being in her apartment. So I go to the balcony and I'll sit down on the balcony and give her the computer. And basically, I'm looking for an info dump. Whatever. Tell me what you need to tell me. Grunts to try to make a sound and it doesn't work. And she types out... I think I'm in too much pain to sleep, but I haven't slept in days. So what do the other two of you guys do at the scene with disarmed cops and, you know, Winston driving away and all this? I'm going to leave and go back to the walk back to the Baltimore to get my car and then look at my tracking device and see where Bug went and go track him down. What? My car is fucked up? No, no, no. Would you say Chrysler 300? Yeah, yeah, Burgundy. So you're on the right side of the block that you're on the block that faces Bugs building. So nothing is vandalized. <clears throat> the gangs don't bother anything on this side of the street. Double check, make sure the auto mag is in the glove box and, and drive towards the tracker. No one has bothered your gear. Apparently you parked in the right spot. If it had been on the other side of the street, it wouldn't have worked as well. Warren, what do you do? Because I mean, everyone's dispersing and there's cops here and at your speed, you can do anything you'd like. I don't know where Bug, he told me that he wasn't gonna take her back to his place. And I, I don't want to, would it be safe to assume that Warren or that Bug would take her to Metal's place? So it's a reasonable guess, but you guys all have phone numbers and all this. It's not like he's disappeared. This isn't a D&D &D game, right? Everyone's got phones. Right, right, right. The immediate reaction after I'm standing there is I look at the cops and just go, well, this is awkward. Your guns are right here. And then I'll just slip <laughs> away. I'm going to say, I'm going to go get those donuts now. And then, psh, uh, yeah, I'll just ring up Bug and ask him where he's at. You answer the phone, Andy? I'm just making her comfortable. She's not in any shape to answer questions or anything right now. I'm getting ready to leave her here. But what I will do is I will ransack Metal's place. Metal's going to hate me. I'm looking for a, a active burner phone. I will give this phone to her, make sure my number's in it and red number's in it, and then say, when you can or want to talk or text or whatever, contact us. Try to relax. Food in the fridge. I will double check that, but I'm pretty sure metal leaves it stocked for me, if nothing else. Rosa, you, do you put the armor on? No, not yet. You know exactly where this is by the park because you've been there when you um, left a message for these guys back a ways. And you get there, um, and you, of course, walk up to the door, but um, you can hear the conversation on the inside from when you were here before. This is without question metal's apartment knock on the door. Red is coming up behind her in the hallway. Gang's all here. I scowl. What? Open the door and let them in. Okay. I will glare at Rosa when she comes in. So I had a dream about you. That's why I arrived at the Baltimore. And then I see the person from my dream and you from my dream. I seem to be in the right place at the right time. Want to drive back, head back to the Baltimore and talk to Abuelita? I kind of do. I'm going to fly, and if you get within arm's reach of me, I will hit you. Don't hit me. I can't take a punch. 
well, then don't get within arm's reach of me and stop putting bugs on me or whatever the <laughs> frick you did to find me. You know, I got to say, Bug, that was a nice shirt you got rid of. I'm a little disappointed in you. You were so quick to just throw that shirt away. Well, I go through them pretty quickly. So what's the new shirt? What's today's look? Uh, I can go to my shirt list. <laughs> shirt list. I do. But you say it real fast, it's shirtless. Uh, it's a where's the beef shirt. You all have your own means of moving around, so I'm not going to bust you up in transport logistics. You can fly, you can get in the car, you can super speed, whatever, right? But you make your way back to the Baltimore, and uh, the broken glass is all cleaned up, um, although there's still two, you know, torn out windows there. And it only takes you a couple of minutes to find that uh, Abuelita has moved into a different apartment without um, a ton of damage. She is asleep because it's currently 7 o'clock in the morning, and most of you have been up all night. Oh, we got to wake her up. Okay. Well, you can put in a call to Aaron, because we I'd rather let the little old lady sleep, at least in the short term. Let's call Aaron. Bureau of Indian Affairs. Aaron, this is uh, Celine Connor. I run a women's shelter here in Capital City. You were involved in that incident this morning at the critical care. Yes, yes, yes. And we we'll just want to let you know that we don't know her name, but she's safe. You're aware that a warrant has been issued for the arrest of Bug for a um, unlawful detention, literally take stealing someone from police custody. It seemed like the thing to do at the time. It was not a good situation. She could not be in the, these people's hands. We're looking at some type of prostitution ring that she's uh, being used in, and uh, we got to see that, that this is stopped. So there's an assault charge pending against you that I have de haven't decided whether to process about beating up a uh, an Inachuk agent. Apparently you broke his arm this morning. And I'm deciding what to do with this. Yeah, he was pulling a weapon in the critical care. And we'll leave that for the police. I'm saying charges have been filed and I'm deciding whether or not a charge from a foreign national is gonna be leveled against you in the city. And we're still working on that. Let's get together and bring whoever it is you wanna bring and let's all go have lunch couple of hours give me a chance to get my files together because this is messy sure where do you want to have lunch a chinese buffet place in moscow west what do you guys think the play is this this guy didn't seem all that grateful that we rescued one of his citizens from harm in fairness he just came in heavy because he has to come in heavy he he made the play he had to be but he gave us as much room as he possibly could I say we go to lunch. Well, you go to lunch. I will be nearby. Red, you'll probably go to lunch because you're not going to pass up a meal. Right. And I will just, if I show up, they've got to do something about it. Literally, they, they have to do something about it. So if you just go, you have some wiggle room that I don't have. I literally kidnap somebody and I'll own that. I don't regret it. I, I'm not saying I at all think I did the wrong thing, but I'm sure that the uh, law enforcement, even if they agree with me, have to do what they have to do. I am loving the vigilante feel that this game has come out to, largely from the last section, but here as well, about between doing what's right. Metal and I were always about justice. Okay, I'm about justice. And I'm just going to drive over to the Chinese buffet. And what time of day is it right now? It's, it's a little after 12. You've got a couple of hours sleep, but... We meet him there, I guess. In civvies, or you're in your super suit? Hero matter to him, so yeah. And I'm not. I'm just in my civvies, and I just put the 45 auto mag in back belt. A piece of the armor that has all my security and radio shit on it, so I can record the conversation. Nice. And okay. Also so you pick up the audio gear. Okay. So you get in and um, he's just easily recognizable as a federal agent. He's got the big round table in the center of the room and all of that. He's apparently a real regular here. And the people at the Chinese buffet are glad, or Chinese buffet are glad to see him. Good, good. Selena, Selena Connor. So yeah, I looked you up. You do good work. Shake your hand. Try to. There's a lot of uh, bad apples in town. There's more, <laughs> I know. more work to be done than can be done. I can only help in one small area, but I like to think in my one small stripe, I'm helping to make things better. Red Runner, I've seen you on the billboards. Yeah. Uh, town's official superhero. Cool. It's good to, good to help people and be known, I guess. He's with the FBEE. -E. Right, right. He's the town's official superhero, right? 
You guys get involved in this whole mess with the casino. Looks like we are. Looks like we're getting involved. Some of this is the nastiest things that you've ever seen. And look, I, I did a little research and Bug walks the line and Metal is looks like a straight up uh, criminal who does good when it suits her and I don't know you too well enough. I run a Let woman's you... shelter. What more do you need to know? What more you need to know is Winston is a nine-time champion Biachi Cup shooter. And he is a uh, fourth Dan Shakudo. And you broke his arm. Yep. Question. I'm new to this superhero stuff. Uh, what does any of that mean? Winston is one of the most physically dangerous men you're going to meet in a lifetime. He's one of the best shots to ever get out of the Marine Corps. And he is a knife fighting champion. He likes his silks. He likes his worsted, worsted wool. They're made by hair. It's custom for him. But how he affords all of the nice cars and the nice suits is because he is a um, problem solver, right? That's a man that goes through and high price, calm, high price customers pay him to make problems go away. People like him were targets for me in Afghanistan. That was special ops and intelligence. So uh, that explains it. I'm not too intimidated by tough guys. I might be. That's why I'm here, Red Runner. From what I understand, if someone wants to hit you and you don't want to be hit, you just leave the county. Yeah. Uh, you can outrun bullets, right? Most of them. Okay. Okay. I think you'll be fine, kid. Yeah, I can heal pretty quickly, too. But, I mean, I still feel pain, so it should work out. Wear a mouth guard. Yeah, maybe. So you tell me what you know and I'll jump in with what I know, and let's see what we can do to break up a uh, human trafficking ring. We know that Winston was setting up the victim with just, I don't, I don't know, like frat boys. They don't seem to be people with like a lot of money or whatever. It seems to be a pretty low type of, I guess, gig to have Winston on the scene. That seems weird. You think you have that backwards. I think something had gone very wrong with a couple of frat boys beating up a girl, and they sent Winston... Wait, he was in the bug building, wasn't he? If she made it to the bug building, Winston's the exact man you send to extricate people. It wasn't about the frat boys. It was about staying out of the way of the metahumans. But Winston's the, uh, he's the pimp, no? Do I got that wrong? He's the cooler. The pimps work for Winston. So he was sent there to kill... The and to get his client fucked. Because his, yeah. Because they weren't supposed to be there and they're beating up the merchandise. Look, some of this is awful. And... Winston has no morals at all. He doesn't care what you want as long as things are bought and sold. He's kind of like the evil version of metal. He has no morals at all. He doesn't care. But it, maybe they paid to beat up a girl. Maybe they paid to kill a girl. I don't know. Maybe they paid for sex. If his clients had walked into a bear trap with the most powerful and enhanced entity in the city, yeah, that's no doubt why they called him. He was just there to retrieve the clients. Clean her. She was just merchandise to him. Where can we find him? Where does he hang out? Where does he live? Well, he lives at the casino. He has a condo up near the top floor. Security there is amazing, but this is where the whole thing with the BBM syndicate. Who are they? Were you there when I was telling Bug about that? I didn't know what BBM stood for. So, so far, no one does. Oh, okay. That's what I was fishing for. The casino in Inachuk lands. Chief Rockwalker is a weak man. I know he's a chief in name, and he has certain legal authority, but... The casino was almost completely funded by uh, BBM. It's run by the Indians, and the standard of life has come up and all of that, and the Inuchuk have done pretty well, except for the ones that have been displaced, thrown off their land, or in some cases, forced into prostitution. Now, the way the law reads in this country, gentlemen, and I'm not, excuse me, gentlemen and lady, I'm not happy with this. I'm trying to live with this, is if someone commits a felony on a reservation, even if they're caught in the act, they can't be prosecuted by reservation cops. It's really far too easy for them to say, that's not what happened and get, get out from under BIA. I need such an incredibly ironclad case because if a crime is committed against a resident of a reservation, if you can get me an ironclad case, an airtight case, I can put them away on federal charges. But if I don't have something that's absolutely sealed up tight, it's way too easy to wiggle out because of the law, because of the laws with Indian nations. So make no mistake, there's an old law called the Mann Act. Are you familiar with it? 
If you transport a minor across straight lines for a lewd or lascivious purpose, I can put him in jail for 20 years. Best way I have to enforce the law is if someone like you, who's not all that attached to law enforcement, can prove a minor has been transported across state lines. I can put him in Leavenworth. I can put him in prison. I really want to put these guys away. Yeah, he was packing something. It has to be military-grade equipment. I can tell you some things about BBM. That that's what they do. They're high tech. They make a certain variety of cartel grade equipment. They don't tend to sell to the military itself, but take any junta of ruling scumbags you can find around the world. They make high tech weapons and defenses for them, and this is where their money comes from. And they're essentially laundering it through this casino. The FBE has a number of registered superhumans there, but they're members of the Inachuk Nation. Really? Winston is a registered F, uh, enhanced entity. We don't know what he does because it's a secret. It's all right. You got me. They have become members of the Inachuk Nation. They still have to rescue. Re they still have to register with FBEE, -E, but I can't tell much about them. Red, can you get any information from your boss over at the FBEE -E on these guys? Uh, yeah. I mean, I can give a call. The more we know about what we're going up against, of course, the better. Yeah. Here's the problem. There is more good jobs and good schools that have come to the reservation because of the casino. We can't just shut it down because it's also what's helping some of these guys. And it's good jobs that allow people to support their families. So how do we stop the slave trade and the gun running? We take out the people who are doing it. Make it super scary for someone to try it again. Make it look like a loser. I'm open to it. Got a lot of casework on this because my sphere of influence, my ability to even investigate, begins and ends with members of the Inachuk Nation. If someone's not Inachuk, I can't even do a search beyond Google. We should be able to keep some of these people under surveillance and try to get something on tape, incriminating evidence on tape. Get me a case and I'll prosecute it. We're gonna be heading out there to set up camp, spend the weekend at the casino and finding people, tracking them down and recording their conversations and trying to hack computers. Yeah, and I'll uh, call up my boss and ask. Yeah, I was just kind of curious. They call him Proud Star. He's born Japanese, he's an Inachuk, and he's a precognitive samurai. He moves before you know you're going to attack. There's at least three other enhanced entities on the reservation that I just have completely blank files for. I can't get into it all. Those three we need names and, and powers on there, Red Runner. All right. We'll get up and leave. Good. Leave a tip. The lunch is on him. 